Hi everybody, it's Helen McConnell here from HelenMcConnell.com and this is video number three in my four-part series of pandemic weight gain. I want to reiterate, this isn't about body shaming. This is just if you have put on more weight during the lockdown or working from home or whatever's going on than you would like if you're feeling a little out of control because that's not body shaming. That's getting to the root of, a, of what is possibly a problem. So in the first video, we talked about how to begin to talk to yourself during this. If you're shaming your own self, um, that is not helping you. It's actually harming you. And then in the second video, we talked about looking at when do you eat? And I showed you how to tap before you go eat. You can, you can eat whenever you want, but do that short tapping in that video before you go eat. It takes about 30 seconds so that you can begin to gain control over when you eat so you're not eating unconsciously. That's all. In this video, video number three, I want to talk to you and help you discover what you might be hiding under the eating. What's behind it? And, and that kind of goes with the second video where we talked about when do you eat? What are you thinking of? What, what are you avoiding? Stuff like that. But usually when we eat unconsciously, and trust me, I have eaten unconsciously off and on for many years of my life. So I get it. But the idea of this and all of my tapping is to help you become more conscious in your life become more aware of how you're acting and reacting. So I discovered during COVID, especially recently, I discovered grocery pickup. I mean, I know it's always been there, but I kind of always enjoyed just popping over to the grocery store to Whole Foods or New Seasons and picking up my groceries. But a few weeks ago, I decided I would order online and go pick up my groceries because the store is really close and it was such a such a nice convenient thing to do and I don't tend to spend as much on groceries because because I have to pick it all out and then my goal is to not go to the grocery store again during the week what I was what I discovered was I started to run out of butter and it was going to be a few more days before I did my grocery pickup and I thought wow I better order double because I don't want to run out of butter next time and I had to stop and ask myself, why not? You know, and there's this feeling that happens, and I don't know if you can relate to this, but it was kind of like, oh my God, no, I can't run out of butter. And you may have something that you don't like to run out of. And it's okay, but why not? Why can't I run out of butter? Butter is not essential for my well-being. Butter is not essential for my nutritional well-being, a balanced diet but I really like butter. So it really got me thinking about and looking at what I eat and even at a deeper level and how I eat it. And it turns out that I'm not very good at limiting myself, even mentally limiting myself before I start eating. So this is where tapping can really be helpful. First of all, like I've said throughout this series, number one, you gotta become aware of what's going on. What's the problem? Well, I could just tell you I'm not good at limiting myself and leave it at that. But that's not okay for me because I have this tool, tapping, that can help me to be better at limiting myself. First of all, I want to be aware that I've been telling myself that, well, I've just never been good at limiting myself or whatever story I could tell. I don't like to limit myself. I'm going to give you some ideas. You can check on your own. Well, I'm a grown up. I can eat whatever I want. You know, I was always limited as a kid or, or I just got divorced, so I'm going to eat whatever I want. Or the kids are gone this weekend, so I'm going to eat whatever I want. Listen to those things. Just really begin to notice those things. I'm not asking you to judge them. Just notice them and ask yourself, that belief or thought is serving you. Is it really serving you? And it might be. If it is, that's totally fine. I'm not trying to change your mind about that. But here's what we can do. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to tap on my head and I'm going to say, I've always told myself, and you can repeat that on the eyebrow, that I'm not very good at controlling myself. Side of the eye. Not when it comes to food. Under the eye. I've never been good at controlling myself. 
under the nose. And that's the story I keep telling myself. On the chin. And, and then I wonder why I can't control myself. Collarbone. I keep telling myself under the arm that that's just the way I am. Top of the head. And every cell in my body believes me. On the eyebrow. But that's not truly who I am. Side of the eye. It's just who I learned to be. Under the eye. And if I learned it, I can unlearn it. On the chin. And I would like to unlearn that particular belief. On the chin. I would like to learn to control myself collarbone to limit myself under the arm when it comes to food or whatever you want to put in there, beer, or wine, or alcohol, whatever. And you just keep tapping around and say, and, and now I want you to put in this, the phrase to, so you can begin to notice what comes up to say, I am good at, at controlling myself on the eyebrow. No, I'm not. Side of the eye. I'd like to be good at controlling myself under the eye, but it kind of scares me under the nose. Who would I be if I could control myself on the chin? I never wanted to be that person on the collarbone, but I think I'd like to start being more like that under the arm, the person who can control herself. Top of the head, when it comes to food. Just take a breath there and really sense into whatever came up for you. For me, it was like, I can see the pattern through my life of when I didn't control myself. And many of you know that in my teens, I was a cigarette smoker and drank, and then I became an alcoholic and drug addict. and. I could, I never could control myself, but that's because I didn't even try. I had too many feelings and emotions that were uncomfortable that I didn't know what to do with. And then I actually did become as physically addicted. And food is really, food can be really physically addicting. But the, the difference is I don't have to drink alcohol to survive. I don't have to do cocaine to survive or, or smoke cigarettes to survive. But I do need to eat. And so it's, it's like finding this balance, living with, comfortably with the thing I might be addicted to, food or stuffing my face, whatever. But I know with tapping it's possible. So as you tapped through that, that, those couple of rounds with me, what did you notice? Do you find it difficult to control yourself when it comes to eating? Or, or maybe you control yourself really well but are miserable, that's not fun either. I want to find a nice place where my mind and my body are balanced and that I can eat until I'm full or a little before I'm full and then stop and know I'll be okay. Okay, so just kind of sense into what you felt. Rewind and tap it again if you need to or you can write down whatever came up and use those as you tap, those thoughts and images. Here's the beautiful thing about tapping, and people always tell me, I don't know what to say when I tap. And I say, just tap those tapping points and say what's true. You can rant and tap, but don't hesitate to say the negative. Like, I'm afraid to control my eating. I've never stopped eating before the food was gone. I don't know what will happen. It scares me just thinking about it. This is what I've done my whole life. I don't know if I can change. Whatever is up for you, just say it and tap. And as you tap and say these things, notice if something um, causes, you, causes you to feel constricted or, or react in, in a more intense way. And that's a clue. Then you pull that thing and go, and that's what you're going to tap on. 
Now, at some point, I, I watch people all the time, and I know it can be difficult to do it on your own. So get somebody to help you if you can't do it on your own. Your mind and body wants you to avoid those uncomfortable feelings at all costs, those uncomfortable memories, those painful memories. But if you want to feel better in your life, they need to be dealt with. But do it gently, lovingly, and like I said, get someone to help you uh, tap on the tough stuff, okay? That's video number three of four. Stay tuned for number four coming up soon. Subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching.